folks, get ready to rumble because this is a mini, mini lesson about formants. Um, so uh, formants are something that we measure mostly when we're looking at vowels, but there are also reasons that we would look at them with regard to some consonants as well. Um, a lot of reasons actually, um, but we're going to talk about them with regard to, 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 to vowel systems. Um, this is important for typology because if you're really trying to understand the way that um, a language's vowel system works and it's just the distribution of vowels within within the system you really have to understand how to read a formant chart um, so this is going to be not a very in-depth look at this if you're trying to look at this and and trying to learn how how formants are created and all that stuff I'm not going to go into that in depth that much but um, there's plenty of stuff to read about the, the details. Um, so the basic idea of formants are that when you are making a vowel sound, you have um, your vocal tract in a certain position. So this is what your your mouth looks like approximately when you um, pronounce the vowel in the word heed. So that's the e vowel there. Um, now you notice that you're going to make some pitch with your with your your voice down here, and that pitch is going to travel up through here, and it's going to echo just like when you shout down a tunnel right and it's going to echo in a certain way depending on how you have your tongue positioned within your mouth um uh just like when you yell in a parking garage it sounds different than when you yell in down a down a very narrow tunnel or something like that the vowel heed is going to sound very different from the vowel hod um because of the the different configuration right the the echoing is going to work differently in this vowel than in this vowel um now how do we measure that we look at this um chart called a spectrogram this is the name of this type of chart i'm not going to go into how you achieve a spectrogram um just know that this is about what it looks like um now on the spectrogram uh for a vowel like heed you're going to see a signal like this. And the way that you can tell this is a vowel so clearly is because you have these nice little lines in the spectrogram. Um, this isn't exactly what a spectrogram. This is a little bit of a simplified version of a spectrogram. Um, but this is good enough that we can talk about this as looking like a spectrogram. Um, and you'll notice that over here, you also have these three lines, sort of, in your spectrogram, but they're in different places. And so this is what we use to measure different vowel qualities. Um, Usually when we're looking at this, um, we call this F1, that's formant one. So these lines are our formants, right? So uh, here, I'll label it here. That's a formant. And this is a formant. And this is a formant. These are all formants. Um, you can see it's sort of, yeah. Um, and we and so this is formant one, and this is formant two, F two. And usually when we're just going to map map the vowels of a language, we just look at formant one and formant two. This formant three is um, less uh, important, but is sometimes used for other things. Um, so usually we're looking at F one and F two, and F one and F two here. And this is all we really need to describe the vowel qualities. Um, now, interestingly enough, if we plot this on, on, a, on a chart, so over here we have F2 frequency in hertz. And over here we have F1 frequency. Now we have to do this a little bit upside down to how we would do a normal graph, right? But what does this look like? This looks exactly like our IPA vowel table. This is pretty cool, right? Um, now you, there's a little bit of messing with the scale here in order to get this nice and pretty, but this is about what it looks like, right? So if we look at our chart for ah, we see we have a really low F1 and a pretty low F2, right? So we follow up down our pretty low F2 and our, and our um, pretty low F1. Um, if we if we look at this one, we have a really low F1 and a, and a pretty damn high F2, and there we have E way up at the other end of the spectrum, right? So um, you can look at online or in books to see uh, the spectrograms for each of those vowels. It's sometimes fun to go through spectrograms and try to identify all the vowels just based on the formant frequencies. Um, now, in any given language or dialect for that matter, vowels can fall all through this system, right? You can get them all over the place, right? So 
um, to use just the IPA for these vowels, right? So in some language, you might have an ooh that looks very much like, you know, that some speaker of English would identify as an ooh, but it's really up here, right? So an English speaker would say, oh, that's an ooh, and put a put a U for that when they're doing a transcription, but it's really up here. So it's useful to have, have this chart instead of just your regular old IPA chart because it lets you get more specific and you can sometimes notice things that are really interesting. Um, uh, yeah, all right, thanks.